Hello guys, welcome along, welcome to uh, part two of this main Whippet build. Um, please remember to like and subscribe and uh, hit that notifications bell. Um, over 200 subscribers now and over 100 videos. So um channel's going well, I'm really chuffed with the response and uh, things can only get better. So as you've seen from the, um, I did a quick review of this kit and then I did a build part one which was just a build, built it in 20 hours. Um, that wasn't actually 20 hours build and that was 20 hours with sleeping and washing and ironing and all that stuff. Not washing me, washing my clothes, well washing me as well but uh, yeah washing the clothes. Uh, that's what bachelors do isn't it, otherwise you get your um, your missus to do it for you but um, I haven't got one of them, don't really want one either thanks so uh, I'll do the own washing. So anyway, um, where are we? It's had a black base coat um it's been painted all in that the nooks and crannies um i've painted the white at the front end of the sponsons and also at the front of the fuel tank there and then masked it off the green stuff you can see is uh vallejo masking fluid which is my favorite masking fluid i'm not a big fan of vallejo products to be honest but their masking fluid i think is awesome and um if you use it with a brush, as long as you don't let it dry, it'll wash out in water really quickly. You have to be quick though. Um, whereas a lot of them, like the uh, guns, I've never found anything that'll wash out of the brush. So, And the brush they give you in the dispenser is just a bloody joke. So, um, yeah, this is my favourite. Um, so, where are we? Gave it a base coat in black, and obviously one of the reasons for primer is to spot any errors. And what I did see was on these spuds... Um, there were witnesses of the sprue connection points so I've basically sanded them back um, and then put some Mr. Surfacer on them and then when they're dry I'll sand them back again um, I'm not really too worried about having them perfect it's a tank and these are basically track pads if you like uh, so they don't need to be perfect anyway but um, you know this is going to be again this is going to be modelled as a sort of fairly new undamaged tank otherwise all these would be bent and everything and it'll be a bit weathered and stuff but i don't want to you know whether it's a high heaven and plaster it all in mud i don't like that look when models are all plastered in mud i like them to be weathered and and used but not you know if you saw my mark four tank you'll see what i mean the tracks are built um and painted these have been painted in the new tamiya color iron and then um, they've just had a wash with a flory um, dark dirt, I think it's called, which is an aqueous wash. I like to use aqueous washes on tracks because even um, <clears throat> lighter fuel fluid or um, odorless thinners will kind of attract, uh, attract? They don't attract anything. They attack the small pins on the plastic so you know I know everyone's gonna comment no they don't they're fine but uh, in my experience they do and I even did a trial the other night with one of the Tacom tracks and I left left it for I don't know three hours in a in a small bath of um, lighter fluid plastic turned white very brittle and the glue joints fell apart so I know it does attack it um, and one of the issues is with stuff like this tracks um you know anything with moving parts the little tiny gaps in there where the pins are the um the fluid would be uh capillary action into there and it would stay wet for a long time and therefore that would do its job and i mean let's face it these tracks fall apart easy enough as it is so um so there we go guys so there's there's the whippet uh i'll get some paint on it now and um, well, I'll get these rubbed down first, get some paint on it, and then uh, we'll see how she looks. It's going to be a few seconds for you. It's going to be ooh, 24 hours for me. All right, so um, see you in a minute. And here she is, all green. And as you can see, I've laid one of the tracks on just to see what that looks like. And uh, yeah, when you look at it without tracks and then you look at it with, it sort of makes a whole world of difference, doesn't it? So um, yeah, there she is, all painted green. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of modulation on it. Um, nothing too severe, just a touch. So uh, yeah, I'll show you how I do that now. 
Right, so as you know, um, I painted this with XF61 Dark Green Tamiya, thinned with the um, AK, the AK High Compatibility Thinner here. Um, <clears throat> so, so that's basically the colour it is over a, a black base, as you well know. So, highlighting I'm going to do with XF62 Olive Drab and XF67 NATO Green and if I put them together like this you can see how the three will work together as a modulation so you can see that on the left you've got the dark green colour which the, the tank is now then in the middle you've got the olive green which is a lighter shade and then a lighter, again shade, a lighter shade again on the right in the NATO Green now the main thing to tell you with this if, you've, if you're new to modulation is you don't just use the paint you um, you use, you use the paint, it basically 10% like paint, 90% thinners for the modulation work. So what I intend to do is with the olive drab is highlight areas like this here. Yeah, and here. And then I may even come a little bit down the sides here. Then with this one, thin, probably 95% thinners, I will just pick out areas around here particularly on the roof and all you're doing is basically the higher you get the lighter you come so I know you're thinking oh my god it's not real it's, it's artistic license it's making the model look kind of real if you look at the one of these tanks in real life with the sun on it or with the light on it you will see that I mean, even now you can see with the false light above it you can see that this panel here is much brighter than this panel here as I look at it under the light I can't really see a hell of a difference, but the difference on the camera is massive. So what you're going to see through the camera is not actually in reality what I'm putting on the model. Cameras do tell lies, unfortunately, especially on YouTube. So um, let me get some paint mixed up and I'll show you what I do. OK, so I've got the um, XF62, the olive drab, in the airbrush here. Um, and it's thinned with basically a mixture of sort of 50% water, 40% um, IPA, and uh, and 10% sort of if, if that uh, screen wash. So, and it's very, very thin. I mean, I can, I can show you on here on this palette. If I spray it here, you'll see there's hardly any color change at all. So it's, and if I go too heavy, as soon as it starts to go heavy, you can see what happens. So yeah, it's very, very thin. So what I'm going to do initially is just get some paint on this area here and if I, as long as I keep spraying across the top I won't actually get paint down the side. So I'm just going to lightly put some paint on here and you can just see it going on. And don't worry about the actual finish you get. So do just, this is just an initial very quick coat that will hardly even show. So do the same on this side. Same up here. What I want to try and do is keep it away from the vertical surfaces. So down here, of course this thing's covered in rough edges underneath so it's going to keep picking the rag up. So down here, I'm afraid the light's not good. It's because the colour of the tank is so dark it's difficult to get it in the light so you can see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is just spray the back edge there. And then to mask it, I can take a post-it note and just hold it there. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? I'm flicking post-it notes all over the place. Right, so I just hold this here and then spray that area. Bloody gun's in the way. Who put that gun on there? Oh, that was me, wasn't it? Take a piece of post-it note, rip it off. Nope, not enough. There we go. So I've made a custom piece of mask in there. Vacated this, they charge you a fortune. I can spray that now there and then come around here on that corner. There we go. So now that panel is slightly lighter than the ones above it. So I don't know if you can see anything here. Try and pick it up. I'll blow that and dry it off a bit. So I doubt very much the camera is going to pick that up, but uh, you can
can see that it's it's a little bit lighter now on that area. The other thing I need to do is actually paint this one here. And again, keeping the brush vertical so it doesn't go on the vertical faces like that. So that is an extremely thin, very, very thin layer of paint on there. Just put some more on there. Okay, so that's it. All the horizontal surfaces have now got this layer of olive drab on them. So I'm just going to do it again. Just on the uh, engine cover. Really careful, there's a lot of tiny little hooks on this kit. Spit there. It's disappeared. So, I don't know if you can see that there. Very, very slight difference. Okay, I've done away with the white cloth. Obviously, that was what the problem was. So, um, hopefully you can see a lot better now. Now the problem is, as soon as you get the angle so you can see what I'm doing, I've got a bloody camera about four inches in front of the face and about eight inches above the model. And in between, I've got to try and get an airbrush in and spray so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, so, right, I'm just going to put this, put this post-it note here and spray in there. And then I'm going to put the post-it note here. And, oh, come on the post note there and spray in there and then just fill in around the area and that bit under the gun let's do it freehand because I can't get a post note in there so there we go I, I hope you can see that now in this picture you can see that the top of the model is a lighter shade of green than the side but only very very slight yeah I just want to get a bit more on there And believe me, when this is weathered, this will just blend in. If you remember on the Mark IV tank, I mean, the top of that was like another whole tone low, low, lighter. So again, get the post-it note in here, into the corner. Just a quick flash across them. Um, yeah, and that's it. And I think maybe what I will do bit of precision airbrushing now in here just, just get some on there just to take the shade of them down a tone as I say it's so subtle let's dry them back in fact, I think the camera is accentuating it more. It's making it look a lot more garish than it really is to my eye. So maybe my eyes are knackered and the camera's compensating. So again, on this side, I'm going to get in here. Just try and turn it so you can see what I'm doing. Just very, very lightly putting a shade on in here. I'm going to have to be in front of the camera, I'm afraid, because I can't get into the right-hand corners with you. So there we go. And then, if the mood takes you, you can sort of highlight some little areas. Like that. There in the back. And it looks like I've got greasy fingers, because I've left a greasy fingerprint there. So uh, that'll have to be done again. So anyway, there we go. Um, there she is, all done. Now I'm going to do is mix up a lighter shade and do it even more. Just put a bit more on there. Right, so now I've got some XF67 in here, which is the NATO green. And this is even thinner, just to show you. You can see that, I mean, that is just like literally water there. If I try and really bang it on with what happens, it's, uh, yeah, it's very, very thin. So now I'm going to be going very, very careful where they're getting these more greasy finger marks. I've just realised I've come home from work, had a quick look at this on YouTube and then gone straight on with this. I haven't washed my hands or anything, so I've probably got oil from work on my hands. Never mind. 
has to be an oily tank on it. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so now I'm going to do the same on this side as I did on the other side. But now I'm going to sort of stay more towards the middle, more towards this area. So, just giving it some... And what you can see is basically the dark, as I'm spraying it, you can see the dark patch. And that's, I mean, I basically sprayed dirty water on here. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick that out. But now you can see there's a lighter area in the center, but it is very, very subtle. Same here. That and then across the middle of that panel there, and then concentrate on the roof now. So concentrate on this panel here because this one, this one would really get the sunlight. And you gotta remember the paint in World War One, well World War Two, the paint was very easy to fade. If you look at some of the uh, American aircraft in the Pacific. On the, on the um, aircraft carriers, you know, they, they fade in like hell. The paints were nothing like they are today. So, you know, a few a few weeks in the sun tank will probably fade quite a lot as well. As I say, you've got to, when I did the Mark IV, you've got to go over the top with this. You've got to make it look garish and then bring it back. It's all about how you bring it back. And as you can see, the, the paint is so thin, it's like I'm piling on, doesn't it? But there's hardly any colour change at all. It's basically, like I say, dirty water soaking into the soaking into the paint that was on there before. A bit there. You can see the airbrush hitting the camera there where I'm so bloody close. And just a little bit in the middle there. that back and there we go a little bit more on there that's it job done so now if you look at that, I'm just rubbing it in the airbrush. I don't know if you're going to see this in the cat on the camera. Try and get it in the light. There you go. And I could make the camera pick it out because it always looks a lot heavier. These here, I don't know what these are. I can only think these are tiny remnants of paint. I use one airbrush from Italics as well. And um, I've got a feeling that's what that is. I mean, I'll, I'll hide that with some filter, but... This is the problem. I need to buy myself another airbrush just for metallics. So, um, yeah, there we go. You, I don't know if you can see that. The camera's going to pick it out, but we've got a, there you go. I think that's picking it out quite well. We've got a different shade on the horizontal surfaces than we have on the, on the vertical. And then once you get a filter on there, that blends in, it looks really, really nice in my opinion. So um, I think I will actually just put some on the back there, just a little bit across there. There we go. So uh, that's that. So pop back in a minute and I'll have the, um, the masking off and start doing some of the detail painting. I know you want to see it, so I'll do it live on camera, taking the masking off. Let's see, um, let's see how good a job I did. If I can get the edge of it, there we go. There's one piece off. It's funny that we build these kits, so we're so careful with our masking not to scratch anything when we take it off. And then we go and cover the thing in scratches and dents and goodness what. 
as I say, this is this model won't be weathered too heavily. Let's get a bit of tape off of there. Now I need to be careful pulling this off because I've got the um, the masking film on there. As you can see, it gives you quite a little bit of a tug. And what I don't want to do is rip those little fragile hooks off. Let's pull the. Oh, this must must be like watching paint dry for you guys. If you actually want to switch off, go to the um, the low, the newest paint drying channel video. It's uh, it's quite interesting. I think it's better than this. There we go. Now this jammy dog tape, which is the blue stuff I've used, yeah, it's pulled that hook off. Look, wow! Oh no, it hasn't. It's just deformed it. Jesus! Afraid that hook got damaged in uh, in a battle gov. for that one okay yeah that top hook got damaged during the um when it was taken off the uh, train it got knocked yeah and there we go that's not a very straight line is it <laughs> in fact that's not very good at all i i don't know when it's weather it might look all right <laughs> so uh yeah that hook needs to go back down like that So I've got the other side and here she is all painted stripes on tracks on modulation um, guns not painted yet um, exhaust given a coat of red brown but not painted yet see how effective the uh, drilled out ends look it's so much better than blank plastic um, so yeah modulation on it looks very very garish yes i know but wait till you see it with the filters on and the pigments and stuff it really really turns it down so um so yeah there we go now this side oh i, I painted the red and i got some overspray onto the white so i repainted the white white over the red overspray then i realized that the stripe was actually um that way diagonal i hadn't got it straight so that, well, what I'll do is I'll just put some tape on, I'll make the stripe slightly wider and square it up. So I did that, and when I did that, I got some more red overspray onto the white. So I sprayed the white, and then I realised I got some white overspray onto the red under the tape. So I had to put some brush some paint on around that bolt, so that's the slightly dark spot you can see there. But, I'm sorry, life's too short. I put the tracks on. Um, do you know what? I'm not a lover of these tracks. They fall to, they fall to bits as soon as you start pulling them. I think there's 68 links a side, is it? Or 58 links. And when I put them on, it's, they're absolutely, I mean, they're very, very taut. And um, and yeah, you, you pull them any more than I've just done. They just ping apart. They're probably going to ping apart in the cabinet. But uh, maybe I need to put some glue on them or something. But I don't want to ruin the effect I got with the flurry wash on there. So, um, yeah, the, the front's all um, got, the, got the red and white stripe as well. So, um yeah, localised gloss coat now, get the decals on, decals, sorry, and then start doing some um, some detail painting. If somebody can help me, these things here, these track pads are called spuds. They're there, they're all across the back, and they're along the side here. If somebody could help me and tell me what colour they should be, please, I'd be grateful. Um, it says in the instructions, that it's just the bolts that are painted, I think, but um, I'd like to know what colour they should be. If you could help me, please. Uh, maybe you've got the AK kit. The AK kit? The Tacum kit. Maybe it tells you in there. When you'll probably be AK colours, it tells you or something. So, um, so yeah, there we are. So, I think we'll call that a wrap for this part. And then the next part would be all about the weathering. Thanks for watching.